Hi everyone, this is Jim. Welcome to this postmortem of my Blitz game number 835. Um, my opponent started off with e4, and I went with uh, c5, the Sicilian defense. So he played a, a normal move first. At knight f3, I go d6, the main move, and going for the classical Sicilian. And now he played uh, bishop to c4, which is a pretty rare move at this point. Uh, the normal moves are d4, or a bishop to b5 check, or even... Uh, c3 or knight c3 but uh, well bishop c4 i think is uh maybe a little bit questionable although i didn't find any particular way to refute it looking at this in fact we just ended up in a in a main line by a different move order so um then looking at this with a chess engine it seems like the way i played this is as good as anything so knight f6 attacking the pawn i mean you should always when you see an unusual move from your opponent you should always pause to think uh, and look for a way to uh to refute it. If it's not normally played, maybe there's something wrong with it. But uh, in this case, there doesn't seem to be any uh, big refutation. Let's see. And he continued with uh, knight to c3. And I went knight c6. At first, um, the chess engine liked this e6 move, but after I played it uh, and I looked at it a little bit deeper, it didn't seem to like it as much. So knight c6 still seems to be fine. Um, you know, just getting ready to. Uh, uh, keep keep control of that uh, d4 square um, and then white played d4 right away and this is uh, transposing back into uh, a main line he could have played d3 here and gone for a uh, a closed setup and that's kind of what i was expecting but he went with d4 and watch what happens to the number of games we're just at three games in the database and after i take we're at 1100 games <laughs> 1121 games so this is the main line and uh, after he takes back, this is just as if uh, we had done the usual stuff with the knights. Uh, and then uh, it was White's turn to move, and he played the move bishop to c4, uh, starting the uh, fischer sozin attack. So we've transposed into the fischer sozin attack. Um, there's different ways to respond. I've always played e6 here. I think that's a reasonable response. And then the normal move here... Um, he is bishop to e3 uh, developing or um, bishop to b3. I think uh, sometimes Fisher would play that way immediately. But anyway, in general, the idea is this uh, this bishop may be a target here on c4. So it wants to stay on this good diagonal and get some pressure against the king. But it doesn't want to be a target here. But uh, in general, White's plan is to drop the bishop back and castle kingside. That's the, uh, the Fisher sozin attack. Um, so he went bishop b5. So that looks like it ought to be a little bit of a waste of time, but uh, still it seems like uh, there's no big uh, refutation here from black. So it seems like white can get away with playing like this. Even knight takes c6 is not given as best, but uh, is still an even position after uh, these moves. So we're uh, out of the opening book at this point. And um, let's see, he continued. Yeah, he dropped his bishop back to d3. I continue with bishop e7. And we both castle, and it's probably in the range of about even here. There are times in this, uh, as we go through this opening, where the chess engine prefers black a little bit, and there are other times where it prefers uh, white a little bit, uh, but the, the differences are pretty small, so I don't think uh, anything uh, has gone wrong here. Even this move b3, which looked uh, kind of strange to me, uh, you know, weakens the knight here. Uh, but he wants to put his bishop on this diagonal, and it will be, it will be good there, uh, contributing to potential attacking ideas along the long diagonal there. So I went uh, rook c8 on bishop b2, and then I went c5. So here the engine actually prefers d5 to c5. So let's, let's give a line here. I was a little bit worried about um, him just pushing e5, which is the best move, and the best move, as I, I think I mentioned this in the game, it looks like I have to play knight e8 here. And Chess Sungeon plays knight e8 and is happy. So let's see, this knight maneuvers around to e2, this knight comes out to c7, queen up to d2, and then maybe uh, c5 is a way to continue here. And, um, well, you know, it's hard to calculate these things when you're playing a game, you know, and, and uh, looking ahead a few moves. To me, uh, this position is seems like kind of a mixed bag. Um, this pawn here is pretty annoying. It kind of cramps my position. White can get a quick attack going with uh, f4. And uh, 
Yeah, and and you know, it's my pieces have been chased away to the queen side, so it feels like my king is is almost alone over here. So, uh, looking ahead <laughs> in the game, trying to compute the variations and figure out what's good, I I, uh, I would not find this very attractive. I, I saw so I was I was avoiding this. Even I didn't even. I mean, I stopped pretty much calculating after knight e8. But um, the chess engine says this is actually uh, fine for black here. I, you can see some good points for black. Basically, um, all of these uh, squares are under control. Let's get rid of that arrow. And by the pawns. So it's pretty large center influence. And, um, and the attack is not immediate from white. So, uh, so black has time to organize his pieces, uh, which are not badly placed in any case. So that's that's the uh, best play according to the chess engine. Anyway, I went with c5. He went with knight e2. Yeah, actually after queen e2, I think this is a point where uh, chess engine likes white. Sorry, not d2, queen uh, e2. Say queen b6, rook d1, rook a to d1, bishop c6. Preparing to push the uh, d pawn forward gives uh, an edge to white, but I, I think this should be quite playable for black as well so I'm not uh, I'm not worried about having to play that anyway 92 is a move that the chess engine didn't like and starts to give black an advantage again so that's what I mean uh, the advantage kind of switching back and forth but it seems like none of it no critical mistakes are being made so I get Bishop C6 in right away and I am thinking about pushing that uh, D pawn forward now he goes uh, Knight to G3 which is also, I was also threatening just to take that e pawn as well, so defending it. But now I get in d5, and uh, he decided to take, which uh, the chess engine approves of. And um, here's the second choice I made the chess engine doesn't quite agree with. I, I took with the pawn, and um, you know, I kind of like this setup with the two pawns here. Um, I have some ideas pushing them forward and uh, maybe pushing his pieces around a little bit. Um, or, as you saw in the game, maybe pushing the uh, deep pawn forward to block out the long diagonal. Um, but the chess engine would take with the queen. And uh, it would live with this uh, isolated pawn here and uh, just play actively with the pieces. Well, queen to d5, as we saw in the game, comes with a mate threat, so it is a forcing move. And then uh, queen to g5, and then... Uh, and then the chess engine gives queen to e1 as the response and uh, knight to d5. So it, it kind of uh, likes this for black. Good good active position. Um, one important point here is I was a little bit worried about uh, bishop to c1, kind of chasing my queen around. But, uh, well, the queen can come here to uh, e5, hitting the loose rook in the corner, so gaining a tempo. Say the bishop comes out to d2 to stay on this diagonal. Um, and then uh, defend the rook. Now the queen can go to d4 with check. King runs here, and seems like this is uh, fine for black. In fact, uh, you know my pieces have been activated and uh, the weakness has been created in white structure, which I guess is uh, uh, enough compensation for the fact that I have a weakness here with this uh, isolated c pawn. So anyway, interesting play. So I, instead, I took with the pawn, kept my pawns together, and, and kept control of some squares in the center there. Uh, but uh, black has some nice counterplay ideas. Knight to f5. I really didn't see this move coming. And I think uh, black starts to get some kind of edge here. I played uh, d4 here. The chess engine would go rook to e8 immediately. I play that on the next move. The problem with d4 is that white can start undermining immediately with c3, and that's the way that white should play. Basically, white let me get away with this uh, d5 move and never really challenged it, but he started going after the bishop. So I defended it. And then he played queen e2. So that was probably a slight mistake. The chess engine is saying, go ahead and exchange out here to keep an edge for white. Uh, let's see. He takes. I would take back. Takes. Take. And then play c3 and uh, try and open things up in the center for the two bishops, which are really uh, well positioned and probably also leaving me with some kind of isolated pawn in the center of the board. Um, I, you know, it's still a playable position, but it looks like white has some edge there. Anyway, he went queen e2. And of course, that lets me uh, drop my bishop back and, and get a tempo on the queen. So this was actually good for me, or at least uh, equal. I mean, it's good Good. That was Bishop F8 was the best move there, and then I went with Queen D5, 
And so it seems like this queen d5 move, oddly enough, this game ended in a draw, and it seems like after this, uh, there's there's no way for me to really avoid the draw. So I was, uh, you know, kind of looking through this game, wondering where where I had gone wrong. So we saw some mistakes earlier, but at this position, I should be uh, doing fine here, and it shouldn't necessarily should not necessarily end in a draw. It should be able to continue. Um, the chess engine gives a couple lines for uh, how White could continue. One is Queen to d7. Um, you know, taking taking a look at this knight, so it has to stay defended. Also, maybe defending the f7 pawn. We saw that was a problem in some lines. Some lines, uh, and the other move it liked was knight to d5. And both of these lines, it gives gives white some kind of uh, edge here. So, uh, so there's a ways I could have played after this. Even though it's like the most forcing move here, since I'm immediately threatening mate, it seems like, um, well, because of the move he chose, he could have played f3 here. And then the game would have just uh, continued. There wouldn't necessarily have been a draw. But after queen to g5, it seems like uh, the draw is the natural result of best play for both sides. Now, I didn't uh, have best play here. Uh, let's see. Uh, g6 is actually the best move here. Let's let's look at this first. And then uh, f3. Um, there's, a, there's a clever point here that if he tries the check now, I can actually just take that knight off because the queen on g5 is needed to defend against the mate threat, so he can't, uh, he can't take that bishop, so the knight check just loses um, <clears throat> loses a, uh, a piece. So f3 to block, and then uh, bishop to d7, hitting the knight and threatening to take it now. Um, and yeah, bishop takes, bishop takes, queen takes, queen takes, and I can take with a pawn that releases the pin on the pawn. So, so really, I'm threatening to take it. Then knight h6 and uh, king g7, and this seems to be even. So uh, that's one line that turns out to be even. Um, oh yeah, yeah. So that was the line that turned out to be even. Knight to h6 check is is bad because it just loses. So um, anyway, uh, that's that's a uh, one line that that turns out to a draw. This ended up in a draw too, but he did have one chance right here to uh, win. He's got a tactical win at this point. And if you want uh, some time to think about it, maybe you can figure out the right sequence for white to uh, win the game. Okay, uh, pause the video if you want some time to think about it. it it's an interesting, an interesting challenge to see if you can find a set of ideas that allows white to win here. Um, there's two only moves. I'm giving the answer away now, so last chance to pause the video. <laughs> there's two only moves in a row, and the first one is rook takes. You've got to take with the rook here. And, of course, the chess engine is giving... I shouldn't say of course, but it's one of those cases where the chess engine gives nonsense moves like queen takes rook. But if we play normally to try and discover what the point is, you take back with the rook. And then um, here's the second only move. You don't... You don't take that rook, you play bishop to c4, hitting the queen, and then once again the, the engine is playing nonsense moves like queen takes bishop. But anyway, after those two uh, forced moves, say the queen drops back here, we'll show the idea. Now we can play knight h6, knight h6 check. Um, this pawn is pinned, so the king has to move. I can't take the knight. Um, and then he can take on f7 defended by the bishop. That was the point of that bishop c4 move. Get that bishop to a good square. And um, and now the king the king goes back. Then there is knight to e5 check, for example, winning the queen. So um, there may be other places the queen can go after, uh, after bishop to uh, c4, but they all have some problem or another. And so I think that's, that's typical of the kind of things that go wrong. So this is just a winning position for uh, for white. So that was white's chance to win the game. So I played knight e4. This was white's chance to win the game. He had to take with the rook. Instead he took with the bishop, so he no longer has that bishop c4 idea. And now we really are in a path where um, the only outcome is a draw. All other moves uh, leave one side worse. So, so the chess engine is giving our play, uh, leading to a draw as the best play, oddly enough. So he takes which uh, distracts my queen away from the defense of um, f7. So now we can play this knight h6 check, king here, uh, knight f7 check, king back, and there's a draw by repetition. 
Um, if he tries to avoid the draw by playing something like um, f3, kicking the queen, um, queen can go here. And this uh, position is also rated even, although I guess the game would continue, so it wouldn't be an immediate uh, repetition, but, uh, but I do get my pawn back. So, uh, so it's a position that's also rated as a 0, 0, 0 by the chess engine. So maybe, maybe there is another forced draw after that. But anyway, uh, it also gives this as, uh, as the move here. So he, we just uh, played out the repetition. And then, yeah, the draw happened here after a threefold repetition. Anyway, it was an interesting game. Hope you guys enjoyed this, and I will uh, see you again soon.